hard thing to do is to come off to an 0-2 start and make the playoffs in this league. Your DeSoto Eagles drop down to 0-2, hope to make the playoffs and do better the rest of the season. Let's get on to this talk show. All right, welcome to the season four NHS of Fate talk show. We're your host, Basics, JB, and Gangster. You guys want to say hey. hello? <laughs> Thank you, Gag, for that hello. Anyways, our first topic for today is going to be top O line and D line on a team basis. Mm-hmm. So, JB, do you want to go ahead and start? Um, so, if I say I say we start with O line first. Because I think the D line is pretty basic, but I think O line is like it's pretty unnoticed um, league wide, no matter what. Absolutely. And I, I, I genuinely think that no matter how toxic they are, or how annoying they are, it's going to be uh, Saint John Bosco with the best O line. I'm, a, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I also want to say Saint John yeah. Bosco with the best O line, but I do want to give a shout out to my guys at Columbus because I know I get a lot of time in the pocket. Facts. But yeah. I don't I don't know how St. John Bosco does it's, it, but Patrick is up for at least know, 30 seconds every it's, play. It's straight pocket. up just like I think it's like like their like um OFL like blocking ability yeah. or some shit. I don't know. But they, they really do understand how to um, move around with the quarterback or with the running back no matter what. I think it's okay. the Go ahead. I said I think it's the angles that they practice at OFL. So, yeah, and they kind of like bring it into inches of fade, yeah. and you know the blocking is kind of more overpowered in inches of fade than OFL, so so it's, it's easy to them. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, it's, I it's do just, have to get a shout out to Patrick though. He really does know how to roll. He really well does. And with what he's I, I want, I I want to know like what they talk about, like how good the communication is, like yeah, in games. Exactly. Uh, any other O lines that you guys don't want to talk about? Um, mattered. Days O line, it is it is not that good. <laughs> They're dog shit. It, it's it's horrid. It really is. Um, BJ's yeah, a good quarterback. BJ more time to make a more accurate pass because yeah, like, BJ's being rushed. Yeah, I feel like if, if BJ doesn't have enough time in the pocket, then he won't make the most accurate throws. Yeah, and um, he's only he only has two rushes on the whole year so far and through two games, so like one a game. Mm-hmm. So he's not getting in any lanes either. And he's only completed five passes out of his twenty-three, so it shows how like effective the online has to has to be in games. I believe. Uh, my question for you guys is: Do you think that those statistics that you brought up, like his five completions on twenty-three attempts, only two rushing, do you think that could be based off of his of a shifty alone? Well, um, it it definitely could. No, yeah, it it can be. Okay. But I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like if if Matter Day's O line isn't good, then JB won't BJ won't be good. Yeah, because I mean but you gotta but, but you gotta take into account that he also needs to have like good communication with his line and like it's not just his mistakes. It's also it could be the line, but mainly if it's five out of twenty three, is that what you said? Five out of twenty three. Yeah, five yeah. completions. If I, that's that's times. probably just that's probably just him, or it's probably. I would, okay, but if we look at the top three quarterbacks, it goes basic Patrick Hunted. Hunted always has like a good O line that he can work with. Patrick yeah, has the best O line, and then uh, you, basics. You probably have like one of the best O line as well. When you have Shifty at the bottom, who doesn't have the best O line, you know. Or like JB Hunters, he doesn't have the best O line, but he's a good quarterback. So, so I think O line does affect how it plays with pressure, and like mm-hmm. having to drop back a certain like way. And if they don't make a lane open, then you have no nowhere to uh, go practically. Exactly. So, yeah, because you, if you think about it, if if you if you're pressured as a quarterback, and if you're if they have a smart defense, then a lot of your options are taken away and the short op- so you have to look okay so if you're if you're a, a defensive coordinator right and if you're if the quarterback is pressured he can't throw a deep ball so you could you could drop your deep corner down and double team your his short options 
And when when he has no short options, then what options does he have? But so, do you yeah. think we have to tie into a his wide receiver core? Pretty much. Because a QB's first read is high low. Yeah. And so basically once that high ball is taken away, he's basically looking for something short. Like he's like Champ said, like if he's pressured, it's pretty much over. And a defensive coordinator is just literally gonna feed off of that. Because if you're playing against a good defense, they're they're gonna they're gonna read how how pushed back the quarterback is. And yeah, so if um, back then they're, they're gonna take away his short options. That that would be the smartest thing to do. Yeah, let, let's look. So uh, he's played DeSoto and Bishop England so far. Um, on the D line side of that, we have Hunted at number two, or whatever his name is, Saint Laurent, at number two in um in rush defense. Then no one else. And I'm then, like, some guy at 23. I feel like, I feel like be, matter day, that game, their defense played pretty decent. Their D-line played amazing. They had about 12 sacks. They they have the best D-line in the league, yeah. Yeah, their, D, their, D-line, their, D, their D-line pretty much carried, but their offense couldn't uh, capitalize on their, on their defensive stops, and that's that's how they lost the game. Yeah, no, I, I think – I really do think it's being rushed with B.J., so yeah, that, like, I think he's being a little frantic, like trying to look around because he's like, I have no lanes to fucking run. I can't step up. I just have backwards to go. Yeah. So Jeez. I feel like if if Matter Day gets an O line, then they they'll definitely be a top a top team in the league. Gotcha. Okay. Do you think the wide receiver core is not compensating enough for the O line? For for Matter Day? Yeah. No. For Matter Day, the wide receiver core is, is pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're, there's nothing wrong with the wide receiver core. It's just the O line, and they're and on defense, I would say the uh, the secondary. But what I mean by that is, do you think they're not running the right routes that they no, need to no, be I in don't. order to compensate? No, I no. But the routes they run, it's it's like the throws. Okay, so some of the routes they run, it's like it's like a hard fit. So. He has to make a, a really accurate pass, and you can't make a very accurate pass if you don't have good blocks. Yeah. No, I, I think I think um, from the game that I watched with Champ whenever he refed, I think it was it was pretty it come it come down to the the wide receivers running into each other a little too much on on like free plays. They might have design plays that we don't know, but like it, it seemed like they were getting clumped together. Or like one guy goes deep and then everyone else is in like a little packed on the other side. And it just doesn't look um, formatted, if that makes sense, and like easy to the quarterback's eye. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. So I just want to piggyback off of what you guys mentioned earlier about the D line, so we can move into our next uh, topic. Yeah, top rushing defenses in the league. Oh, uh, Matterday. <laughs> yeah, Matterday. Matterday. <laughs> they're <think>. they're. <laughs> They had they got twelve sacks on, on probably one of one of the uh, top three O lines in the league, bro. That's that's something scary. No, I, I don't think they had. I don't think they had twelve sacks on that whole game, but they have twelve sacks in the whole season so far. No, nah, they had twelve sacks that whole game. I, I believe that whole game they had twelve sacks. No way. Yeah, I think it was actually. Did they get all their sacks? I think it might have been eleven. I think it might have just been that one game. They had four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They had eleven. Yep. They had eleven. Damn. So if it was 11. that one game, do you think it was by fluke that no, they're no. number top? The number one. Uh, or... I mean they uh every team Cures had always had a good D line. Yeah, the D line always is phenomenal and they're able to contain and then when you contain a quarterback like Hunted, it cut it results in a sack. It really does. If you if you are able to contain Hunted, he is he doesn't know what to do. Gotcha. But then if you let Hunted go wild, then it's kind of over. But they did a really good job at containing and getting the sacks and getting the stops. Like I said, it wasn't the defense that so it mattered. It was the O line. Yeah, and their offense. Gotcha. And who do you guys think is going to come in number two for teams on rush defense? I got um. It's either Bishop Anglin or uh, St. John Bosco. I think I think it's going to be uh, St. John Bosco. St. John Bosco, because the like it's most of the people that O line are the D line, so they're able to get the pushes off and able to maneuver around. So they they just have really good um, fronts in general. 
They got good fat. They got good fat boys. <laughs> good fat boys. <laughs> they got good fat boys. All right. And then I think that's going to lead us into our next topic. You guys mentioned earlier when we talked about O-line, about the wide receivers, and that's going to be our next topic. What Top wide receiver cores. JB, do you want to start us off? Um, this might this might be weird, but like we've scr- I've scrimmed um Westlake a lot, and I think once they do get the scripts down and their quarterback does produce, I think they're going to have a really good receiving core. But um, the number one right now is going to be Columbus, or that could be off a of quarterback play. <laughs> that could be that could be, but no, they have the best uh, statistic receiving core in the league so far. Making me blush in real life. Anyways, <laughs> um, so I actually wanted to talk about what you just said, Westlake. So bringing in the new head coach, we I think everybody agrees that he had insane recruiting. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, oh, yeah, dude. Like one, one night, just one night yeah. transaction was like blowing that fuck up. Exactly. A bunch and of them. I was like, oh, shit. I, I joined their field on like their first day. I think they called it like a tryout. And like yeah. 20 dudes there were in Westlake uniforms lining up for a wide receiver. Versus no, no, they were ready. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, I no, I, that, I, know, I know Kiggy wanted to head coach in this league and he's been waiting. So this was his opportunity and he jumped on it. The, um, All right, that's, but like, uh, I don't have the for being trash. I, I know I know they have um um the juice cooking who's been their top receiver. Um, uh, I think there's a guy right right now. I don't really know how to say the Latavius. name. Latavius. Oh yeah, Latavius. Yes, yes, yes. He wasn't he a quarterback season two? Oh, Latavius. Latavius. Yeah, yeah he he's been a he's he's mainly a quarterback and he's a really good receiver. I've yeah. heard. But I haven't seen him receiver in this league. But. Yeah, yeah. I think as soon as Westlake one, their wide receivers need to get comfortable with the catching scripts. That's one. Yeah, that's, they really do. I've also noticed watching them in scrimmages that while Huss does get time, he doesn't always use his time efficiently. Um, yeah, Kiggy doesn't. <laughs> yeah, to elaborate on that. You can only so for a route, you only have the opportunity within that time frame of the route, right? Before he has to like switch it up. Yeah, I think that Huss doesn't capitalize on some of the earlier routes and tries to develop longer and longer until eventually it results in a sack. Yeah, he 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 tries to extend the play, but then it kind of backfires every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he he sometimes he does extend the play and it mm-hmm. does turn out to be effective, but then then other times it just it's a flop. And it yeah. doesn't seem like he can really get the ball downfield the way he's wanting to. Exactly. When he develops the play effectively, I think it 100% works. 100%. Oh, yeah. But other times, if he continues to develop it when it's like a lost cause, then I think it's definitely going to rely on Huss making plays in the pocket. Yeah. Um, I think his wide receivers run good routes. Uh, they get open a lot. I've noticed that. Uh, it's just about getting comfortable with the scripts and hopefully Huss makes the plays. I think his O line does their job as far as what they need to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one one uh, receiving core I do want to talk about is going to be St. John Bosco. Because we know um, basics you might not know, but last season they were the uh, mainly a running team mm-hmm. throughout the whole season uh, with Brent. Um, just <laughs> clumsy clumsy his way up middle <laughs> but um some of their receivers have been showing off um they have the number 7 the number 9 11 and 13 those are the top their um wide receivers so i'm kind of surprised that patrick is um is throwing the ball as good as he is cuz they have lesser named um wide receivers in the league so I think I want to give props to Patrick and his O line because yeah. they developed the play long enough for the wide receivers to get open. I think I forgot which game I was watching, but Patrick just had to stay in the pocket and continue developing and developing the play until the wide receivers could get open. Yeah, it, it might just be a production of the O line and him, but I, I think they are like kind of like showing off to be a yeah a absolutely. team that is able to be passed, uh, be able to get the ball through the air. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Champ, what's your thoughts on St. John Bosco's receiver core? Champ, you there? 
Perfect. Jam. Peg, what's your thought? <laughs> what's up? What's, what's your, your thought, thought on St. John Bosco receiver core? I like. I mean, I like what I see so far, but I feel like they're gonna get they're gonna get a lot better throughout the season if they keep like progressing the way they are. Yeah. But other than that, they're doing pretty pretty uh, good. Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> okay, moving on All from right. the wide receivers, we're gonna go over to the defensive backs of the league. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Judge, I know you like this. <laughs> Right, so, um, Judge, I'll I'll let you start off. Who do you think has the best um, sec- secondary in the league? Hmm. I mean, based what I saw, I mean, hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of have a t- I'm at a tie for first, but um, I mean, I, I got to see what you have to say. Who do you, who do you think? Because like. I'm kind of stuck right now. I think if we're gonna look down through the um through the schedule with everything, I mm, it's hard to say. I, it really is hard to say because the, it hasn't really been statistically pleasing. Exactly um, on the um, defensive back side of the ball, but then again, we have we quarterbacks haven't been doing good. Exactly. So there there has to be a time where they're being locked down. Mm-hmm. Or the catching is just too much for some receivers, but I do think mm, I'm gonna IMG's IMG's defense uh, secondary is actually pretty good, but they only have played Westlake, and um, Westlake wasn't that good week one. They're playing their week two game tonight, so we'll see. We'll see how they do against Chandler, but I do think they have Ma- Magic Zaza. They have um, Kratos, Evan Booker, um, tripping. I, I do think it's going to develop into something good if they can, um, start off week two correctly and then transfer over that into week three. I agree. Uh, I just want to give a quick, I, I hate to do this cause you know, I'm on Columbus, but I just want to quickly talk about Columbus players, uh, CB court. Go for so it. So we have Drip and Jay, Sanders, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Post and Nike, Lost okay. Season, okay. and Fatback's antenna or okay. at short. Okay. And I, I hate, you know, I hate to like <laughs> do this, but I think name wise without not basing it off statistics. Yeah. Name wise, yeah. it seems pretty good. Like I'm not, I'm not going to go out and say like, yes, we're number one, but no, I uh, do we think that understand. sounds good. All right. That sounds yeah. good. Like I, w- like I want to see more into the season. Mm-hmm. Like you guys, like name wise, I, f- like like you said, you guys seem like the best. I'd say IMG second, but like I'm gonna have to see how the season goes and like come back after week two and see how like defensive did. So, no, no. in my opinion, in my opinion, the names sound great, but I haven't seen you know y'all play week two. But judging the score, I mm-hmm. feel like the big names aren't showing up how they're supposed to because. I mean, I don't know who who uh, Desoto has offensively or defensively, but um, Adam, my quarterback. Jesus. <laughs> um. So, um. So, oh, uh, my headphones cut out. Okay, hold up. Wait, someone talk real quick. <laughs> Yellow. Okay, never mind. So, sorry, my bad, my bad. So with Desoto, we're gonna have Adam at quarterback. Yeah. Then we have Debo, me, um, Oofing. Um, those are the receivers, and then float, float fan like Fanty or whatever his name is at tight end, and then Jay Baker at running back. So that answers your question with the who DeSoto has. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty good. But okay, so I haven't seen Adam. So can somebody give me like some feedback on Adam? I mean, all right, I've seen Adam. He, he he's really good. Like going wise. I haven't really seen him run, but I know he's he has good accuracy. Considering that JB just switched to wide receiver and he's been targeting him a lot, JB can catch. Uh let's see. So I know a lot of other people who can catch, but I can't name them off the top of my head. Yeah, but yeah. But, okay, do... p- p- back to the uh, defense real quick. Yeah. Go ahead, basic. If that's where uh, you're leading, <laughs> uh, that was not. I actually wanted to quickly talk about Adam. Oh, go for All it. Right. Go ahead. All right. So I just wanted to say quickly. Um, Based on these statistics, Adam asked after his first game at starting QB looks good, right? 
Yeah. But I just wanted to say every single quarterback, not a single quarterback threw for over 200 yards a week one because all the wide receivers were getting used to the scripts. I mm. think the issue we have with seeing Adam's statistics is that JB actually had to play week one. Yeah. So we Free. see him. So two interceptions, 35.7% completion rating, uh, okay. 67 yards because of the receivers, right? Because yeah. Nobody yeah, was comfortable it's... with the scripts. Everything was foreign. It, it was an issue. So Adam comes in week two, and now he looks like a knight in shining armor because he threw 248 yards, 58.3% completion rating. But we're not, we're not talking about how he didn't have to go through that phase with the receivers not being able to catch. You know, yeah. I think you just boosted my confidence. I'm going back to quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do agree with that. I really do. Because uh, uh, how many pre – there were, what, three preseason games? I yeah. think only one of those were played with the new scripts. I think uh, I'm not. Too they were. They were. They were played with. They're all played with the same. Oh, they were. That's what I was thinking. Oh well, shit. <laughs> yeah, you, no, no. Yeah, I, I really do think. Um, if we're in a Sandler cool. soda uh, conversation, the um, no one, no one really took it like the catching um serious. Mm-hmm. Like they were like, okay, this is going to be easy. We're just going to you know go out and play. But then um, you know, no one cared about preseason. It's preseason. Yeah. Uh, but like once we uh, we week one hit, and then they realized that like, oh shit, we can't fucking catch the ball. I think that's that. Like we started hosting more practices and scrimmages and getting our shit together, and then I think that really did boost um Adam's ability to get the ball around. Exactly. That's what I was saying. And I'm not trying to say Adam didn't do. Good. No, yeah. He did, he did I, Adam did good. Yeah. But all I'm saying is his statistics don't represent us. Like. Somebody who went through that process, like yeah. all the other quarterbacks. Like he just kind of jumped in. Exactly. Yeah. No, I dig it. All right. But yeah, going back to CB, who did we say for number one CB core as far as teams go? Um, I said IMG, but I don't know what y'all think. I think I'm going to have to most. wait till the end of week two to make my decision because yeah. I'm kind of stuck on Columbus and IMG at this point. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how... Um, Soto corners do, and mm-hmm. also St. John Bosco corners. I'm so I glad. Yeah. Well, my team yet. <laughs> with the Westlake game, where uh, I forgot the quarterback who quit, but their starting quarterback quit after that game. St. John Bosco was doing great as far as coverage goes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. St. John Bosco is that team that, like, you're like, oh, they're full of. Annoying trollers. people, yeah. trollers, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, like throughout the whole season, but then they play a game and they're, I mean, they're like winning, they're blowing people out, yeah, they're, like doing better than people think they would. So, you can't really sleep on um on a team, um, just based on how they act because I mean, they are pretty stupid, but they do come out there and perform no matter how clumsy they can be. <clears throat> oh, you know, some sometimes you get a little clumsy with your play. <laughs> Wow. All yeah, I right. know. <laughs> before, before this uh, chat gets heated, let's go ahead and move on. We're going to oh, go to. Oh, oh, oh. I, I just got word from the station. Um, they did make the championship last season. St. John Bosco is that team that did make the championship with How like the same defense and everything. <laughs> How far do they go? I mean, they lost in the championship against Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> but they, but they're, they're really good, though. They're really good. I have to give them that. No, they, they really are. They, they, they know how to make it to the promised land. So it makes sense how they're trying to get there once more. They're just pretty nonchalant about it, unless they're in main chat talking their shit. <laughs> so um, one of JB's fans just a DM'd me asking for us to do a quick topic on Champ and the Wolves' debut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so the champ and the wolf debut. Um, that's gonna be it's gonna be tonight at uh, tonight nine at p.m. 9:30. Yeah, nine thirty, nine nine thirty Eastern time. <laughs> so stay tuned. Um, I'm I'm gonna. This is I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a yeah. No, this is gonna be after, but I think champ is going to not produce how he thinks he's gonna produce. But I still think he's going to produce good. If that if All that right. makes sense. No, that I 
I was saying the exact same thing. I think coming mm-hmm. into a brand new team that you're that you haven't already played with, there's going to be a lot of like things you're going to need to work out after the game. Yeah. No. I mean, you go ahead and look at statistics. Tell me how. <laughs> tell me how many uh, Chandler receivers are on there. God bless. I don't. Is there's there going to be one. Any? There's uh, there's one. And it's going to be yellow. Whoa. Because they yeah, only yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they only had they only had one pass completion. Um. Um, in week one, and it's still it's, they're playing their week two game tonight. So I I don't think we've really seen enough of their of his receiver core, mm-hmm. and their O line is not that predominant. Right. All right. So uh, I think it's gonna it's gonna come down to tonight, yeah. if anything, because uh, there's no you can't really predict anything when it's it's pretty new. Uh, it looks like week one for them practically. Yeah, exactly. They're coming yeah. off a of forfeit one too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. th- I don't really think that's going to be momentum for them. It's going to be an it's, it's it might be a little nerve wracking if that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. I will say this though, um, props to Messi because he did um, like implement like actual plays with his receiver core, and after doing like scrimmages against his team, I can tell you like for sure his his plays work and they work yeah. well. So I'm looking forward to hearing how he does that game. Yeah. So now that we've had that go out of the way, we're moving on to quarterback running backs. So what are you guys' thoughts on top quarterbacks, running backs in the league? Uh, I, I Let's start, start with start running backs. Let's start with yeah, running. I want to start off with, uh, with running backs. Um, so right now, uh, the top uh, running back base player, so that would be the number four person on the rushing stats. That's going to be um, Dior Deshaun. Mm-hmm. I don't know who that is. <laughs> That's a St. John Bosco player. So that, yeah, so, I mean, they're, they're running the ball. Good. Running back. Yeah. So his stats are going to be six attempts on 43 yards and a touchdown. He's a uh, 7.2 yards per carry at a, as a running back. Like he's strictly a running back. He's on a quarterback. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then coming in after that strictly running back is your Nirvana, Ethan. And, the uh, season three um, quarter yeah, uh, yeah, running back yeah, of the year. Here, yep, yeah. coming in with nine attempts, thirty-three yards, with two touchdowns. Ooh. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I still see Ethan over Dior Deshaun I, because the way we have been using him is not how he was used last season. That's why he's not producing yeah. any yards. No, that that makes sense, but. With how Dior is playing, if if they do so produce it, and he's he only has six attempts compared to, um, the nine attempts that uh, Ethan has this season, mm-hmm. um, Dior has seven point two yards per carry when Ethan has three point seven. Right. So right. I I think the minimum yards, and I think I think the O line does a good job of pushing their running back forward on St. John's, mm-hmm. but U- Ethan is the best running back in the league. Right. Um. In my opinion, no matter what, but we'll see. <laughs> I I like Ethan at running back, but I also want to talk about Curzano. Yeah. So, what are your guys' thoughts on him at running back with Shifty this year? Okay, that is going to be a downfall year from his season two performance. Um, uh, I don't know who here basics you weren't here, but uh, season two, um, in, in, in the in the middle of the year. Uh, he switched. Uh, he, he started playing running back, and he skyrocketed to like the top of uh, all stats okay. as a running back. And then season three, he did switch to a wide receiver, but now he's switching back to running back, and he's not uh, performing the best way that he can. And I do think that is to do with their own line quite a bit. I mean, he has um, seven attempts for eight yards. That's one point one yards per carry. No touchdowns. No fumbles either. But. <laughs> See, I've I think I'm being a little biased, but from scrimmages with uh, their team, I've seen him perform very well, and it's not reflective of his games. Which, no, I don't no, know why not at all. Is, but for yeah. whatever reason that is, yeah, he's definitely not performing how he should be performing as of right now. Yeah, um, and then what? okay, um, and then I want to move on to the Desoto running game. Okay, so far. Because uh, Jay Baker week uh, week two he kind of kind of did pop off a little if you do remember that basics. <laughs> Unfortunately, 
<laughs> that I <laughs> pop off. And I think that is a result of the um of the direct snap mm-hmm. that DeSoto um that we do run yeah. uh, quite frequently with the running back. Uh he has um in his week two performance he had five uh five attempts for twenty nine yards, a touchdown, sorry, two touchdowns and a fumble. Right. I th- honestly, I have to give you guys props because what I've noticed in the backfield is that doing a handoff to the running back takes way too much time. Yeah, it does. The running back has to get the ball. And mm-hmm. then after he gets the ball, the defense automatically knows it's a run. So they're all rushing. Yeah. So if you can skip the process where they take the handoff and just do a direct snap, I think I have to agree, like give you guys props. Like, yeah, that's, that's it's really, point. it's it's more effective than exactly. Dang. And I think it's stats reflect that. Like you said, Oh yeah, they do. So I'm looking forward to seeing more from him and, I definitely don't think we can sleep on Corizano because I'm hoping he has a little breakout season. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping too. I'm hoping that he does really um, start getting getting going. Yeah. I'm <laughs> uh, is there any other running backs? Uh, oh, Vegeta. What? Has Vegeta played a season game? Uh, uh, Veg- yeah, no, Vegeta did play week one. He has one, <laughs> one attempt for seven yards. What a goat! He's he's a he's he's dead last on rushing stats, but he's the, the goat. <laughs> All right. So if you guys want to move on to quarterbacks now, if we're yeah, on running backs. Ah, quarterbacks. Champ, do you want to go ahead and start? Seeing as you're a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, no more quarterback. I have um. I have Sunday Jakes that I'm playing. I have basics. Um, why? Because I feel like, I mean, okay, so things basically need to work on is his consistency. I feel like he can be a little bit more consistent, you know, mm-hmm. and with uh, and accuracy a little bit. Um, no, 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 let me interrupt real quick. I don't think it's really consistency based when you look at the at his receivers when they uh, have a combined total of um. 14, uh, 15 drops on the season. Mm. Well, in, in, I, two, I, in two games, you know? So I, I do think that can contribute to the problem because he's, um, from what I've seen, it's good looks. You know what I'm talking about? He's been yeah, good looks all season. Looks, but I feel like, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Some, some balls, like, okay, so this season you have to throw, like, certain balls, balls to the receivers because, you know, it's kind of hard to catch certain balls, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I dig it. So I feel like a little bit more consistency in throwing yeah. balls that, that receivers can catch more will make yeah, him let like. Me, let me throw this. Uh, let me throw this crazy fact at you. So uh, he has thirty. He he's sixteen for thirty four right now. All right. Only three of those are quarterback miss throws. The rest are drops. So I I, I really do think that it is. Um, it's um, what am I thinking of? It's wide receiver play that's lacking, it, even when he is at number one in pass uh, statistics. So I really do think it is boosting, like once his like um, wide receivers like perform like how they did last week when he was eight for ten, that really does boost his um production. All right. Um. Next, I have um. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Next, I think. Uh, don't Jesus. say yourself, St. Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go, with Patrick. And Patrick's been balling, no interceptions. So yeah, there. Patrick's been doing pretty well. I don't know who he played week one, but week two, I can't really say that he he didn't do. I mean, he he did good, but look who he played. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, he didn't play comp. But I don't know who he played week one. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, I, they played uh, Chandler. Yeah, I didn't they play Chandler. That week. game, but I don't know if he did good or not. That wasn't comp either. Uh, for that game, he was 7 for 14 with 141 yards and one touchdown. No, well, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah I got Patrick as number two. Yeah, and, uh, and then week, week two, he, had, he was 7 for 18 with 222 yards and three passing touchdowns. 
So, yeah, I think Patrick has been balling out and has been doing good looks to get the number two spot. And at number three, I have Shifty BJ. I feel like BJ's been doing pretty well. Well, I feel like I feel like he can do pretty good. He he week one he did really good in my opinion. To say to say the scripts were like that, like people didn't know it that well. I pre- I feel like he did pretty good week one. Week two, I feel like he didn't have the pocket presence to to do better than he did in week one. Mm-hmm. But I feel like like I said um earlier, if he gets that O line, then he'll be a a top quarterback in this league. Yeah. Who are we talking about, boys? Uh, (laughs) Are we doing doing like top three? Uh, Um, Yeah, I actually just want to quickly make a comment for Patrick because I know we did it for me, so I just wanted to do a fair shot for him. Combined drops for his receivers that were not quarterback produced, seven, nine. Yeah, so nine drops in total. So you want to mm-hmm. add that to 14. You got 23 completions on 32 attempts. So of those other passes, those were supposedly quarterback produced. How many, how many would that be? So that would be seven plus two. That's nine. That would be nine draw. I mean, nine passes that you missed. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm. Yeah, I, I, I do like to look at the, um, at the, uh, quarterback cause um, and completions because with the new catching and actually us recording drops, hmm. I think it is kind of as an eye opener how much yeah, the one receiver is a big factor on QB performances. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, I actually also wanted to put up my number three, and I said number three spot. I'm going to give it to Hunted, and I'm going to give you guys my reasoning why. Go for so, it. So obviously, yes, he's number three on statistics, but that's not exactly why. Um, I think Hunted plays a very I don't know how to describe it, methodical approach to his drives. So mm-hmm. obviously we've seen Hunted run the ball a lot. 18 attempts, 132 yards. Yeah. However, he also has three touchdowns with the uh, rushing, and that's the most in the league right now. Three rushing yeah. touchdowns. So I think the running well, we do like talk about it and like meme about it a lot. Like, oh, he's a back, not a quarterback. I do want to yeah. give him props. Like, it works for his team. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, he has the number two receiver on statistics right now. Four rece- four receptions, 176 yards, 44 average with who, one drop and, who, and one touchdown. And who may that be? That would be Julio Schiffs. Julio. Uh, season three MVP quarterback switch to wide receiver, Julio. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I will give Hunted that uh, yeah. those props because obviously you know we do talk about this a lot how run, uh, quarterbacks run a lot in this league. But yeah, for his team and his concept, the way he runs his team, it works. So yeah. I will give him that. Okay, I'm gonna th- I'm gonna go ahead and throw my hat into this um, season. You know, season three quarterback of the year. I think I pretty good. Judgment with Champ. I think we have good eyes for this, but so it's going to be basics one, Patrick two, and then I am going to put JB Hunters at three. Wow, JB Hunters. Because I'll tell you right now, when you have a when you have receivers like Kratos, and I know Evan hasn't produced anything this season, but and you have Magic Zaza, you just have to get the offense going. I don't think they did that really good week one, but I think tonight they're going to uh, really prove it. Um, how productive their offense can be through the air. And they're not that much of a ground game um, team. But I do think they're going to get the ball in the air tonight and they're going to really going to light it up with JB Hunters. I think he's going to jump statistically. Yeah, I I can definitely see that happening as well. Um, Going off of this, we're now moving on to most underrated players this season. Ooh. This is gonna be a little, uh, a little spicy. So, Champ, <laughs> do you want to start that one? Nah, I'm not gonna start this one. <laughs> <laughs> JV. Uh, yeah, I'll start this off. Um, I think, mm, mm, most underrated players. I'm not. He's not. He's not really underrated, but. From so far in this season, he's going to be underrated. I think it's going to be Evan. I think people have forgotten what Evan did last season. 
and becoming the number two uh, statistical wide receiver in a matter of weeks to jump up that high and have eight. Uh, I think I had like like eight. Yeah, let me look. Yeah, he had eight total touchdowns on the year. I think I think he is pretty underrated for this season, and he hasn't really shown out quite yet. If that makes sense, that does make sense. Uh, do you guys want to do one offense, one defense? Yeah. Wait. Um, to add on oh another underrated player, I got uh, Cactus Jaden on Matterday on offense or defense. Cactus Jack on offense. Okay. I feel like um he's been doing pretty well this season to start it off, and he's been probably probably uh BJ's. Like number one or number two target. Yeah, I think statistics right now show him as the number one target on his team. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. But he does have two drops on the year. Yeah, <laughs> but he smart. also has two touchdowns versus <laughs> yeah, number yeah, yeah. one current <laughs> receiver. Yeah. Receiver. So yeah, but um, oh. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'll go ahead and give mine for defense. Go for it. My most underrated defense, and as much as I hate to say it, <laughs> uh, I'm a, like, I don't know, King Capri. Oh, my. King Capri. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, I, I, okay, me. explain. Explain. All right, all right. <laughs> so I was able to do the stats for the Monarchs game, right? Yes. So I was able to watch a bit. With their defensive line, they have really good pressure, okay? And that's mm-hmm. credit to their whole defensive line. But I'd, I just feel like he fits in well with their scheme. Like, I think one of the... I forgot who it was, but one of the Monarchs D-line got a forced fumble on Hunted, and then King Capri was literally right there to pick right it up. pick it up. Exactly. So I just... He might not exactly be the best rusher, Mm-hmm. But I definitely do think that we no, overlook no. how effective he is at the spot with the scheme yeah. we have. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now I can dig that. And did we give any, other than Evan Booker, did we give any offense? Um, uh, um, Champ just did um, a Cactus Jack Jaden. Okay. But uh, let me throw my... My defensive pick, real quick. Mm-hmm. It's gonna, it's gonna be on, it's gonna be on the Monarchs. It's gonna be Luke. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who's that? It's gonna be Luke. Uh, L E W K. Exactly. Underrated. Mm-hmm. You don't know. You don't know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I, uh, I yeah no. So he has uh, three PBUs on the season so far, and um, I don't, I don't think he's like no one's talked about him. But PBUs are big in the league. The interceptions, yeah, but when you get like multiple PBUs and like start off a PBU uh, rampage, like how Meaty did last season, and so did um, and so did uh, Kirizano, I think it really does boost a team's morale. Like, oh, you PBU, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I, I really do think he's underrated, and we're gonna see maybe not off- offensive uh, offensively, but defensively, he's gonna step up. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also agree. I think he has a good team. right now. Because I, have, I haven't watched. And... Oh, champ, you uh, got out there. Champ. Um, huh? You there? <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we yeah, can hear you. Yeah. Um, no, nah, I'm not going to give a defensive player because I've been watching enough games. Yeah. Judge, do you want to hop in? Uh, An underrated defensive player. Underrated defensive. Player. All right. Um. Hmm. Who do I want to give this to? Uh. I don't have. A, I don't have an underrated defense player. Yeah. Um. I'm saying. Okay. Hold on. I'm a. I'm a, I see um, you're talking about this, um, Hunted, in the chat. Ozzy, so he's going to be Kangaroo. He's number one in defense. Uh, after, I'm not going to say he's underrated after week two. He's, he's, he's not, not really underrated. No, he's he, not underrated. Yeah, I've, like I've week two, he showed people, out. Yeah, I've definitely heard people talk about him, which is why I didn't want to say he's like underrated. Yeah, like like four sacks and two swats in a game. Like, come on. Uh, like, like, that's elite. Like, sheesh, that's elite. Yeah. Okay. It really is. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, so I don't really know offensively who I would say underrated. Um, I will say this, though. Fruity D, he's the head coach for Columbus right now. Um, he is a very reliable receiver. He doesn't – it's not shown in statistics because he was kind of late to the – one of the games or maybe two games i think <laughs> yeah actually he didn't even, he wasn't even at the second game but uh, yeah he is a very reliable receiver very uh, reliable yeah and, yeah you could probably show out yeah so i definitely want to give him props for that because it's just not showing in statistics because he wasn't able yeah. to show so i will definitely give him props for that. I, um, I do i do go ahead oh, but no no I, I was i wasn't talking to you i was <laughs> okay, so uh, I think we have one more segment to talk about real quick. Two. Two. Two more? Two. Okay, we, we, yeah, we got two more. Uh, so I want to go ahead and bring out the unexpected breakout seasons um, coming into the so far. And uh, I think I'm going to start it off by saying posted Nike. He kind of popped off so far. <laughs> the, the, the dude popped off. Yeah. Fuck my muffin. Um, oh, shit. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's because we've like put in so much work, but he's comfortable now. Yeah, I, and we we know y'all y'all have the field at seven a.m. Yeah, we all know. <laughs> no, but if you're in a, uh, last season, posted like he wasn't that big of a name. He was fifty five in passing stats with four catches and forty six yards and one touchdown. He's already doubled, you know everything. <laughs> he, he's he's really started producing and showing out, and that might be. He he was on Okoe last season, so the quarterback play wasn't that good with Fruity. Right. So it could be quarterback play and chemistry, but I do think that he's the biggest breakout player of the season. Absolutely. Yeah, and then um, I, I might as well just throw it out there. Um, you just said it. Hunter uh, <laughs> said it in the chat, uh, Patrick, Patrick with his passing, dude. So coming into the season, I thought Didover was going to be St. John Bosco's um, quarterback because of how he played um, at the end of uh, season three when he was um, when uh, Brent got suspended. But Patrick, he, he's really shown unexpectedly what he can do at the quarterback position. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I did not see Patrick as uh, like a passer. Yeah, I didn't either. As like Brent. Like, <laughs> I thought they were going to run it, but yeah. they're, they're throwing it. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're putting an air on the ball, and it definitely shows. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if that's all we have to say, we'll go ahead and move on to the last topic, which is going to be all of our power rankings. Okay, let's go for it. Uh, JB, do you want to go ahead and start us off? <laughs> uh, do you want me to like do my power rankings? Like, oh, I'll go first. All right, you'll champ. go first. Okay, go ahead, champ. <laughs> um, number one, I got uh Saint John Bosco. Wait, do we have to give a reason why? Or yeah, just yeah, I'm um, just just really quick. Just yeah. go for it. One have uh Saint John Bosco. I feel like their defense is pretty good. Their old line is pretty good, and their offense is um very good. Um, mm-hmm. uh, number two, I got um, number two, I have uh, what what's that team called? What's the first name? Columbus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have, I have Columbus because I feel like their their offense is really well, and but I feel like they're to be like the number one team, they they have to work a little bit defensively. Um, number three, I have uh, I kind of I got Bishop Anglin to be honest because I feel like if Bishop Anglin um works on their passing game then they'll be a, a really a really big threat in coming into the season um number four hey, have i cut out yet no you're good keep going all right um number four i have um matter day matter day's defense their secondary isn't that that good but their d-line is probably the best in the league yeah, yeah. Th- the best in the league and twelve sacks in one game is is pretty amazing. So I feel like if if their offense gets better, their O line gets better, then they'll they'll really be a top two, top three team in the league. Um, coming at number six, I have the Soto. The Soto, I feel like um, I haven't seen too much of the new Soto. I don't know if they're new or not. With Adam at QB, they they put up twenty on Columbus, so they're probably a pretty good team. 
I don't know. I don't know the statistics or whatever, but I got them coming number six. Um, number seven. Um, hmm, number seven. Number seven. Number seven. <laughs> Uh, you got, you got IMG and Chandler and Westlake. Wait, wait. Did I skip a number? Yeah. What what number did I skip? Oh, five. <laughs> okay, I put Matter <laughs> number five. Okay, so number six here. I got IMG. I IMG. Um, they have pretty well. They have Evan and Kratos. Kratos is really good, and Evan is pretty, like you said, underrated. But he he has to. You know what I'm saying? Put up more numbers on the board. Um, I haven't seen too much of IMG this season, but um, wait, what's the record? Uh, they are one and zero. They play tonight against you. Who 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 did they play? You. Uh, they got a they, they got a forfeit win against Westlake, but the the score of that will be um, the score was twenty two to twelve, but they got a forfeit win. So who was winning? Watch like one, but IMG got the forfeit one. So I think okay, so if if they lost to Westlake, Westlake's old team used to have been that team that would just throw it up, I'm pretty sure. I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. So I feel like IMG would have to work defensively to be a top team like they were last season. And and I feel like their wide receivers have to put up more they they have to contribute more to the um, passing game, and uh, number seven, I have um hmm. number seven. So Chandler, uh, wait, who's the other team? Chandler or who? Uh, <laughs> Chandler or Westlake? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna put Chandler. I feel like I mean I haven't I haven't played a game this season. So I might go through the QB curse for week one, yeah, with with the drops and and the extra stuff. But I feel like Messi built a pretty solid team. I we have unknown O linemen, but I feel like they're pretty solid. Our wide receiver core is pretty solid. We have Nick, Messi, Zeta Trick, uh, Yolo, pretty solid wide receiver core. I feel like if our defense, um, if our defense is good, I I don't think our our offense won't be too bad. So I out of numbers, number seven and number eight, I have uh, Westlake. I would put a Westlake higher, but you know what I'm saying? They haven't played a game yet this season. And sometimes scrimmages and games are like two different things. Mm-hmm. So I feel like w- once we see more, more of their new team, then uh, we, we can get a better ranking on them. Yeah. Okay. Basics. You want to go? Or should I go up? Uh, I'll go last if that's all right. Okay, that's cool. So I'm going to start from um, 8 to 1. So at number 8, I'm going to go ahead and throw in Westlake only because of how new the team is. So week 3 will be their week 1 practically for that team. And I do think um, they're going to be able to step it up then. Uh, coming at number 7, I'm going to put IMG. To get, they got a forfeit win, uh, but they did got they, they got beat by 10 points, basically. So I don't... I don't unless they uh, prove something tonight... I don't think they're gonna, um, uh, they're gonna be down there. And then uh, number six is gonna be Chandler. Chandler got a forfeit win against um, St. John Bosco in week one, and then they play IMG tonight. So that's gonna be a toss up between my uh, my seven and six, but that's where they're gonna be for right now. Um, going at number five, I am going to put um, this, uh, Bishop England only, only because they got that forfeit loss, but both their games have been close. I just didn't see the um, the offensive production I like to see from Hunted a uh, uh, week two against Matter Dame, and that might have been contributed uh, contributed to the um, to the off uh, to the D line that Matter Day had, but um, I think that really did disturb them. Um, and then what am I at number number four, number five, number five? I'm going to put Desoto. I'm not going to say much. That's my team. They're at five. Uh, four is going to be Mat- uh, Matter Day. Matter Day isn't their offensive isn't there, but their defense is the best in the league. Um, number three, did I skip a team, yo? Mm-mm. I didn't. I you said five watch. twice. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, you said five twice. Shit. So what should I be at number two? Yep. 
<laughs> okay, number two. <laughs> number two, I am going to put uh, Columbus. Um, they have the best passing game in the league. Their running game is questionable. Their defense is questionable as they have come into uh, close games. They haven't been, uh, been really to pull a, league, a lead. Uh, further, they went to double overtime uh, week one, and then week two, they did have a 10-point comeback. Um, and then uh, number one is going to be uh, St. John Bosco. Uh, they're just toxic, and they get in people's heads, and they just really know how to win a game, I guess, no matter how um, special education they can be. But, um, sh- right, go ahead, basics. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think most of the things that you mentioned, like the most of the numbers are pretty much the same, but I'll just go ahead and repeat what I was thinking. So I'll do the same thing, number eight to one. So number eight, I'll go with Westlake Warriors, just like you said, brand new. So looking to see how they do. Number seven, I'm going to have to go with IMG. Uh, Mm -hmm. Again, haven't really seen enough from them, but from what I have seen, it doesn't seem that um, spectacular. Yeah. Uh, going at number six, I'm going to have to put Chandler, uh, again, champ, sorry to disrespect, but, you know, uh, looking forward to see how you guys do against IMG and then, uh, rings can be judged from there. Uh, number five, I'm going to have to go with, uh, matter day because I just don't see the production on offense, which is needed to win games because you need points on the board to win games. And so... They have a great defense, and that's without a doubt, but I don't see their offense uh, enough. And that leads me to number four, which I got Bishop England, because I think they have a pretty relatively um, good offense and defense. Uh, they mm-hmm. have a pretty interesting scheme. I think it's just like a man-to-man, strict man-to-man, and like five rushing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I know that works really well for them, so that's why I'm Six putting rushing. Over today. Six rushing. Six rushing. <laughs> Um, yeah. then I think I'm at number four. Yeah, number, number four. Three. I'm at number three. Yeah. All right. Number three. I'm put DeSoto. Uh, for this one, I can really see their receive like their passing game being very reliable. Like I know uh, scrimmages with you guys and stuff like that, and even in the game, like you guys mm-hmm. were taking very high percentage passes, and that was yeah. really good. Very reliable stuff, and so I can really see them pulling through to even higher rankings later in the season with Adam getting used to quarterback. Yeah. Number two, um, I hate as much as you guys know. I hate to do it, <laughs> but I have to put Bosco there, St. John Bosco. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just because of the wide receiver court that I see mm-hmm. on St. John Bosco. I don't. I know the O line gives Patrick way too much time. Yeah. And even then, like the wide receivers are need to like come back down from 70 yards upfield to get the ball. Um, So that's why I'm seeing them at number two. As far as their defense goes, uh, I haven't, I don't really know much about their defense. I know like they did really well against Westlake, but I don't know how accurate that would be to represent them because their quarterback quit after that game. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, definitely number two, but it's very shaky. And then I have to do it to my guys. Uh, Number one, I'm going to give it to Columbus. Yeah, uh, for what you guys were talking about with the defense, uh, yeah, we had guys playing in a hotel, and so <laughs> their ping was like really high, and uh, so CBs were not really able to do their jobs. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I I can definitely see them when the when they are uh, doing well and doing yeah. their jobs, um, performing very well on defense. Then uh, offensively, I think you guys already talked about it uh, str- more into the passing game than running game. Yeah. Uh, the O line did really well for me uh, on that game against DeSoto. I ended up getting, on, I think I'm number one rushing right now. 11 attempts, 139 yards with one touchdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, definitely credit to the O line. They're doing 